Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome along to another episode from Lamp Power TV. This time it is all about this big red beast behind us, which is the brand new Agrifac Condor Vanguard self-propelled sprayer. So depending on when you are watching this, so earlier on in the year at Laman 2023, we saw it yes, there at yeah. the show and we got a little walk around, yeah. basically a bit of an introduction yeah. to the yeah. machine at Lama. But at that point, we already thought we've got to see this <laughs> out in its natural habitat yes. out in the field. So that is exactly what we are going to do today. So first off, uh, Matt from Agrifac is going to give us a really good in-depth walk around of the machine, find out all about it, get the proper ins and outs of it. And like I say, if the weather plays ball, we're actually going to get out in the field with the operator of this sprayer and uh, basically see what their thoughts on it because I think they've had it since May 2023. Yeah, yeah, May, yeah. And May we time. are in now, uh, what we're in July now, so yes. they've had it, they've got a few hours under its belt now. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it'd be good to see, uh, well, good to hear what they have to say. So we'll kick off with you, Matt, yeah. and we'll get stuck into this sprayer. So, I mean, first of all, this is the Condor Vanguard. Um, where does it sit in the family? So it sort of sits in the middle of our range of three sprayers. So the, the smaller Condor uh, 5 has a four and a 5,000 litre tank. Vanguard here has a 6,000 litre tank. And then we have our Endurance, which is our big 8,000 litre machine. Right, so it just slots perfectly in perfectly the middle. Perfectly in the middle and of the And does this machines. replace any particular model at all? No, no, it doesn't replace anything. Um, it's simply the Condor in some European countries are, is a bit too wide, um, limits the speed. So the the company decided that they need to bring a narrower machine in for that market just so happened they thought put a 6000 litre tank in fill yeah. that market that we're, we're not quite getting yet and here we are we've got a vanguard which is a narrow machine and 6000 litres. right so in essence we've got a high capacity compact yes. <laughs> sort of self-propelled spray yes. and then a couple of other headline figures what sort of boom widths are we talking on this machine uh so we can go up to uh i believe 49 meter machine 49 49 on meter this. machine yep uh, well 48 49 yeah. depending if you're over here yeah uh, but in, in holland they used odd numbers instead of even numbers right and then in terms of the power plant in this we're over to cummins now i believe yes so we uh 2019 we launched the Endurance 2, um, moved over to a, a 400 horsepower Cummins engine in that, and we've just streamlined it into the Condor and into the Vanguard as well, we're just using Cummins across the whole range. Right, um, good it stuff. Seems to, seems to work well. And what horsepower is this model, the so Vanguard? The, the Vanguard is the same as the Condor 5, it's 288 horsepower, 6.7 litre, six cylinder right. engine. So. Good stuff. So she's got a bit of oomph then. Definitely got a bit of oomph behind her. So yeah, she, she definitely goes when she needs to go. So. Right, Matt, let's get stuck into a bit of detail about this machine. I shall yep. spin round and I'll follow you. So I think what we'll do, shall we uh, dive underneath the machine first? And yeah, have a little yeah. Chat about the your famous, what is it, Stabilo Plus Yeah, Stabilo Plus. Chassis. Yeah, this is standard uh, Stabilo Plus chassis. So we've got uh, a track adjustment um, depending on the tyre size. So um that could be anything from from one and a half meters up to, to two and a half meters track adjustment um all um all, all done from the center bar strongest part of the machine that uh, goes straight through this the machine um you've got two hydraulic rams in front of it which does your hydraulic track width yeah set it very easily in the cab um you just put in your figure drive over 4k forward or back and that comes in and out quite nicely right um again and that just that just pulls itself in and out along this this centre chassis. Um, because we're, we're on that centre chassis, that means we've got a left and a right chassis as such, both independent from each other. So right, so they, it's like a massive sort of bogey system on a trailer, is it? It's sim like similar, that, yeah. yeah. So it's sort of it's like a yeah, it, it rocks either side. So they're completely independent from each other. Nothing connecting them at all. Again, only part they're touching is is that centre bar. Yeah. Um, so you get. Uh, rough terrain on one side of the machine, it isn't going to pass over to the other side, it's only going to stay on the one side of the machine. And now, while we are under here, I mean, it's a good opportunity to sort of have a look at the uh, at the sort of wheel mortars and things like that. So, what sort of what have you got sort of going on here? Uh, so any upgrades or anything like that? So, uh, it's very similar drivetrain to a Condor 5, um, it's uh, Spicer wheel hubs um, and Bravini wheel, wheel motors. Um, so 
we're we're hub and motor, so the hub's carrying the machine, the motor's driving it. So it's two independent systems yeah. are working together. Um, because of that, we're able to go up, we we then put um, pneumatic braking on it, so we're up to 50k air braking on our machine. Right. So we've got a complete full Webco air brake system on it, so you put your foot on the brake in the cab, it, it stops. It it's, will stop. It's not an emergency <laughs> brake, it's a, it's a proper brake that you'll find in the tractor, basically. Yeah. Cool, and then if we sort of work our way out from under here, we'll have a quick look at your suspension system. Yep. So, four, four airbag suspension, so each, each wheel's got airbag suspension. Um, again, utilising the chassis and the airbag suspension, making sure that that boom back frame sits where it needs to be. And then in terms of sort of weight distribution, uh, front to rear, what we sort of talking on this model? So we're pretty much 50-50 weight distribution. Um, that's one thing they've tried to maximise with this machine. So they've, they've made the tank forward, um, lost, lost the platform that we originally have on a Condor 5, um, pulled the tank forward uh, just to make sure that we're, we're still 50-50 weight distribution. So yeah. in terms of tyre, tire, tire, um, configuration pressure configuration where we're putting where we need to be and we're a full weight distribution front and back right especially when the when the boom's folded out obviously a lot of weight on the back of the machine exactly yeah. um, it's a fair so. bit of weight transfer at that point yeah and then this is this is the vanguard slightly shorter than the condor 5 at all or is it um, similar or no it's the chassis itself is about a foot longer than right. the condor 5 um so it is, it is a little bit of a longer machine, um, but it, it's still got the right, it's same turning circle as a Condor 5. Yeah. Um, so it's still quite a nimble, nifty machine, even though it's, it sits quite tall, it's yeah. still quite a nimble, nimble machine, basically. Right, Matt, so show us your induction hopper. Right, yeah. I bet you've heard that one before. <laughs> <laughs> what have you got? So, very simple system, um, under a nice plastic head, so it goes up, Keeps all the dirt, well, meant to keep all the dirt out. Yeah, um, as much as possible. <laughs> as much as possible, yeah. There's always going to be the odd odd bit that goes in and out. Um, plastic induction bowl on this machine now. So when the Condor 5 came out, they moved to a, a plastic induction bowl. Used to be a, a stainless steel. Um, so they've gone to a plastic one, just a bit of lightness. Um, a bit more user-friendly as such. Right. Um, comes nicely. Um, all the controls are... Where you want it to be, there's yeah. nothing hidden elsewhere. We say the sort of everything on it with it, aren't they? Everything's where yeah. it needs to be. Um, so, yeah, we've got the big main handle here. So you turn it down uh, to let all the all sort of chemical through the bottom of the huck, uh, hopper. Um, if we open it up, we've got quite a big induction bowl. So it's about 35 liters full. Um, the way the water directs, it goes into on top of those fins, creates a nice vortex, so it's quite good at taking powders away. Okay. Um, yeah. Obviously, chemicals are getting so sticky and thick these days. Yeah. Uh, we have got the option of a, a normal tank rinse with a spring. Um, we've also got the option of a, uh, a tank rinse, which is on the on the lever here. Um, no, it's not restricted by the spring. So you get quite a lot of power. We have got the option as well for IBCs and closed transfer systems so that'll just be a, a t-piece that comes out the top here uh with a, a cam lock on it yeah um and then you'd have uh out the factory you'd have another fitting here so you get a piece of pipe so you plug that into your ibc or your closed transfer system let all the chemical through you then put the end onto this closed system here and that will just flush the system through so there's no contamination that's it just straight in system. yeah and in terms of spray pump capacity what have you got on this machine so on the on the vanguard we've gone to a centrifugal pump on the back which right. is all part of our green flow plus system um we've got a centrifugal pump sat sort of just the back here it's uh, sort of tucked away nicely yeah and what capacity is that you say that's... so that's a thousand liters Right. Um, and then we've got this pacer pump on the front um, just to help prime it. So it's self-priming pump. And then in terms of spray pressure, I believe you guys, it's it's a constant spray pressure on, on this machine. <coughs> yeah, so we've got on this machine, we've got a PWM system. Um, so in the cab, you put in a pressure uh, of what you want 
um, and that will keep its its pressure there. Yeah. Um, and then you've got your variable forward and speed uh, and stuff like that. So we're a flow-based system as well, which helps. Um, so yeah, maintaining the pressure is, is quite easy for our machine. That's it, yeah. spot on. Right, on to a bit of boom chat then. So talk us through your boom. Is it the J boom, as you guys call it? Yeah, so, so this, is, uh, this is a J2 boom, um, which is what we have on a, a, a Vanguard and Endurance. Little bits different to a J, J1 on a Condor, just to make, make it uh, accessible for those wider widths. Um, just beefs it up in a few places. Very, very simple triple fold boom. Um, they're all pretty much the same. Um, very neat and compact. We're quite a heavy boom. Yeah. Um, which sometimes gets uh, noticed in a, in a bad way, but it's all for a good point. Yeah. Heavy boom means it's going to sit where it wants to be. It's not going to sort of wave around. And, and That's such. it. It's got its own inertia, you might say. Yeah, it's got its own lab level as well. Right. It all works with our back frame quite nicely. It's got its own centre of gravity um, or centre of balance, I should say. So it's natural. It always stays level, yeah. naturally level. And that's a, an all steel boom, is it, on this? Yeah, all steel boom. Um, yeah, even the even the in the brake back, that's all all steel boom, um, just to make sure it stays where it needs to be. Right, basically. got you. Um, and then in terms of uh, boom suspension and stability yep. and things like that, what have you got going on? Um, so we've we got our back frame, which is the the first part of the system. Um, so we use a uh, sort of a pendulum system, um, just at the top of these two rams here. That that is the only point of contact the boom has with the with the actual machine. Right. Um, even though it's it's contained in these rails. Yeah. To stop it tilting forward and back, the only actual natural place it sits is the top of that sort of pendulum. So that's where I was on about the natural balance. Yeah. That's where it's naturally balanced. So too. the boom effectively floats around in that yeah. in that frame. In that right. in that frame, so it's, it's slightly off uh, off centre to make sure it naturally balances. Yeah. Um, so in terms of uh, without even having any boom leveling control on it and anything like that. Yeah, before we even get to that. <laughs> it's naturally balanced. Right. Uh, again, being a heavy boom, it all it all helps. So, and then from there to the machine, to the chassis, you might say, uh, I suppose, I mean, you might call it pa parallelogram linkage. Yeah, there, so it? we're yeah. a parallelogram linkage. It's, um, yeah, the, the principle of this is exactly the same on all three machines. It's just a little bit different on each one. Yeah. Um, so, but the principle is exactly the same. So yeah, parallelogram, oh, pa yeah, parallel system comes up and down nicely. Um, and we can actually get down to 30 centimeter uh, boom leveling. Right. Or ride height for, for the 25 centimeter yeah. spacing nozzles. That's it. In terms of your ride height, what have you got sort of controlling that? So our own in-house system, um, we're on strict height plus 2.0 which is now uh, utilising a radar system, uh, which they're tucked away at the moment. So when we're folded out later on, it'll be, it'll be a bit more noticeable to see them. Yeah. Um, but we have two sensors on each side of the boom. We've got nothing on the back frame to, to, to be negative impact towards the boom levelling. Um, either side of the boom, uh, and it's just a sort of looks like a little eyeball as such, and that looks <laughs> that looks straight down. And we've yeah. got the option to look straight through the crop uh, to the ground, and that will look straight through the crop right. to the ground, like it's not even seeing like the crop. Like it's not even right. there. So it can get um, a true ground yeah. following, not yeah. be filled with yeah. crops and other bits and exactly. weeds and things exactly, like that. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but we have then have got the ability to look at the crop. Right. So very much customer preference. Um, you might you might run it the whole year looking at the crop but yeah. when the bar especially barley coming out on here that sort of uh, it doesn't take much for that to start playing havoc with the boom leveling yeah so you you just probably then turn it and look straight to the ground and it's a constant level isn't it the ground so it's just going to be it will nat naturally follow it well obviously the, this is our pwm system um again in-house system everything on our machine is in-house uh we don't have any bolt-ons so this machine is uh electric cam savers um with uh the modules there so that that module big module there controls four nozzles right uh and we're now back to a plug and play system so one module breaks take that out plug another one back in tell yeah. the computer which one it is 
Are you away again? So it's right. quite an easy fix for the and operator. Well, you know, if you're operating this and one of those modules goes, goes down, will you get a warning or anything like that? Yeah, so that'll ping up in the screen. That'll ping up on the screen and say um, SSP fault. Um, and then that'll be just a case of, of, of ringing one of our guys up. Uh, and they'll be able to talk to you, one of the engineers talk to you on the phone if you've got one on the shelf. Like I say, unplug it, plug the new one in, tell the screen, and you can get going again. Yeah. It's uh, it's quite a quick system. And then if we sort of slide under here, like, I mean, like we were saying before, it's pretty easy just to sort of walk under here and have sort of a good look at, you know, key components. Uh, this being one of them. Obviously, this is the new uh, Cummins engine that's in this, 6.7 litres. Yep. Um, and has the, have you noticed much of a difference between your sort of previous power plants and things like that? Um, a couple of customers that have gone from a Condor 4 to a Condor 5 have noticed that it just sort of holds its power a bit better. Right. Um, uh, so, so that's one definite positive that they've enjoyed enjoyed having it. Um, but other than that, it's it's quite a, it's a, a good sturdy engine. It's reliable. Um, it's not it's not been it's it's been pretty bulletproof really. Yeah. Uh, again, serviceability for it's quite easy. We just stick the track width all the way out, um, and everything's ground level. You're not having to pull fluids up at the top of the machine. Everything is accessible to get to from ground level. So that's it. I um, mean, even with the track width pulled in at the moment, I've managed to yeah yeah slip in here. Yeah, um, we we have a, a designated road mode, um, which we we put into. Uh, which puts you onto foot throttle, yeah. so the stick's completely irrelevant. Oh, the stick's taken you, out of that yeah, equation. You, sort of, you put a stick forward at the front of the range, and then you're on a foot throttle. Yeah. So it's very much like driving a CVT tractor. Right, Matt, we're now up in the cab. So, yep. I mean, yeah, just talk us through what you've got. I mean, for a start off, the actual cab itself, would I be right in thinking this is a, a class-based sort of cab? Yeah, so it's a class Vista cab. It's their Jaguar Forager um, Xerion cab. Main control screen. Everything that you need for your day-to-day -day spraying is is there. There's no sub menus to go to, anything like that. Everything's you're not, there. You're not rooting through a million different pages or anything like that. No. It's all on that first layer. Everything's much. Yeah. It's either there or on your joystick. So yeah. everything's accessible. Like I say, you're not going through sub menus and sub menus to get to stuff. Everything's where you want it. When the pump's on and the machine's running, uh, all of this sort of uh, glows up and actually has a direction of flow. Yeah. So if you're quite a novice person on a machine, You'll be able to get in here and understand where your water yeah. is coming from you got some and nice going clear to. Graphics yeah. There. Well, Matthew, thank you very much for showing us around no the new uh, the new Agrifac uh, Condor Vanguard. Yeah. <laughs> cool name, by the way. I like a bit yeah, of Vanguard. Yeah, this is this is good name. Yeah. That's it. So yeah, thank you very much for showing us around. Uh, like I say, hopefully, I mean the weather is still playing cricket just about. So next up, we're going to get the operator in the seat. We're going to go out in the field. We're going to get their thoughts on it. So, yeah, again, Matt, thank you very much for your time on no this problem. section of yeah, the no episode. Spot on.